low estrogen will reduce bile synthesis, so your your bile level goes down, but high estrogen makes your bile more viscous and more sludge like so the how the bile is flowing gets impacted so you're you're making enough bile but it's not it doesn't have the correct viscosity to flow properly down through the, the bile channels and that's where if you do have high estrogen and you do see some issues with constipation just took ox bile to help improve that viscosity right. overcome it will help things to move move down and along To come back to the bowel flow, yeah. um, glucagon, insulin, mm-hmm. thyroid hormones, and sobiterone, the GC1, that experimental thyroid hormone replacement, they all increase bowel flow. And what you see with a lot of guys that have uh, that don't take T4 with their growth hormone for increased thyroid conversion, right, to kind of compensate for that, or they get into this 1,200-calorie uh, uh, crash diet, their bowel flow reduces to the point it's zero, then their liver enzymes, their ferritin, and their um, high sensitivity C-reactive protein goes up, and everything, the little food that they eat just stays there until they take a dolcolax or a sanity. Yeah. And that's, it's, it's very common. You see that on blood work, and, and, and especially back in the day when people would do these crazy crash diets and didn't understand how to piece everything together. You see the blood work, you see thyroid is zero, basically. TSH is sky high, right? <laughs> what is it? Uh, uh, Hashimoto's disease levels, and then T four T three is basically in the gutter, and they they eat like a, a little girl that's like ten years old. This probably eats more, or a ballerina or whatever, a bulimic person, and they haven't gone to the bathroom in ten days. <laughs> yeah. You know exactly what's going on. Well, we see it. You, you learned of it because of postmenopausal women when their estrogen goes down to their yeah. Gut to the standard because bowel flow is impa- impaired by right. that. You see that it's probably one of the contributors to the distended gut, especially from bodybuilders from 20 years ago. Oh, yeah, they yeah. leverage the too many AIs to crush the estrogen before a show. Then they have no digestion. Mm-hmm. Right? And the gut is sticking out. Yeah, and that three days of carb loading is still in there on stage. But can't move. Yeah. So uh, the smarter coach now keeps the estrogen in range unless you really need to crush it, you know, for, for yeah, I condition. I don't crush guys anymore. No, and then otherwise you would use Tatka and um, what is it called? The high dose magnesium and maybe a little bit of sanity to kind of move everything along. And those guys are not distended at all. You can pull vacuums on the day of the show. Of course, you know, like like Dean's competitions, a lot of guys just don't eat on competition day. Yeah, I don't feed guys a lot the day of the show. No. I never understood that. Should be in there locked, sealed away, and then you just relax on your inflatable mattress backstage. And you don't need to eat much. You know, just pump up, you go on stage, and you go back to your inflatable mattress. <laughs> Maybe inject some glucagon, stay full, or AMP. <laughs> yeah. I think what, what you said there about estrogen is very uh, interesting because low estrogen will reduce bile synthesis, so your, your bile level goes down, but high estrogen makes your bile more viscous and more sludge like so that how the bile is flowing gets impacted so you're you're making enough bile but it's not it doesn't have the correct viscosity to flow properly down through the, the bile channels um and that's where if if you do have high estrogen and you do see some issues with constipation just took a ox bile to help improve that viscosity right. overcome it will help things to move move down and along. Um, well, that's uh, probably the high estrogen bile impedance is probably goes back to females. So during ovulation, during pregnancy, as estrogen goes up, it's going to slow that down. It's acting to slow digestion down. So there's more nutrition, right? So the transient time in the intestines is longer. So more nutrition is extracted from the food, right? But we're mimicking that in men that are running their estrogen high. That's, that's what, right. The, the net of this is we keep estrogen in range, right? Low is bad, high is bad. You just yeah. right in the middle. Yeah. Or at least top of the range to match your testosterone, which is super yeah. physiological. Like for me, 30 to 40, 45, 50, it's, yeah. it's ideal. So that's basically top of it's 175 yeah. to 200 picomoles for Dean. Uh, basically, what is 160, right? It's top of the reference range in picomoles. Yeah, one, one, 150 to 160 is the top yeah. end. So I think that's like 35 to 40 picogram yeah. per mil, is it? Yeah. So I always keep mine around 40, 45, and digestion issues zero. But I also have my prebiotics and my tutka every meal. 
Yeah. And I love my sauerkraut every meal. It's sauerkraut and chia seeds, man. It's magic. Two wipes, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I Doesn't mean, matter how much that, Adderall you take. <laughs> I mean, I like what you brought up there. Bowel health towards liver health. Uh, you know, stomach acidity aside, some of that. You know, when you go to the bathroom, it should be one pass and clean wipe and away you go. Um, mm -hmm. That can give you an insight into your, your digestive health, whether it's your stomach acidity or your, your bile output, um, the quality of your stool and, and the frequency, obviously. Um, that, that again links back to the liver and the gut health and potential permeable gut, low pancreatic output of pancreatic lipase. Uh, you know, it's there, there's a lot going on with, when we look at the liver's health and how steroids affect the liver. Yeah, the liver's disease is is prominent, but we have to remember that when the liver gets diseased, you increase oxidative stress from ferritin, from increased cholesterol production, from potential lower glutathione turnover or higher demand for glutathione that yeah whilst we often view like the liver as being like oh yeah it's regenerative like depending until on the risks that you do yeah until <laughs> yeah. you really throttle it and your your lifestyle doesn't really support that recovery um it, it's very resilient if you support it it will support you so you know when when, when you're trying to assess gut health um, the liver enzymes alongside cholesterol, alongside GGT, um, can can let you know that there's there's an issue going on at the gut if the gut is inflaming the liver from that first pass from uh, the the portal vein, vein uh, delivery. Um, and like you said about the anterior hepatic recirculation, if you are having a lot of bowel urgency where you're actually maybe producing too much bile, whether that, you know, is it a flush mechanism from the liver or the gallbladder? Um, that can often be a sign of, of like low fiber in your nutrition where the bile isn't getting bound up in your, your roughage or your, you know, your, your mass still, um, that, that anterior hepatic recirculation, you, you only excrete about 5% of your bile, per day roughly yeah. Yeah. and the other 90 about 600 milliliters or something like that and the most the most of it you reabsorb the other 95 percent as you pass from the small intestine to the large intestine you have anterior hepatic recirculation where you bring that bile back to the gallbladder to be stored um that if we do have excess bile being excreted and we have bile acid malabsorption or bile acid diarrhea that can also change the gut microbiome um, in that you're flushing out a lot of your beneficial bacteria that can produce natural uh, like lactase. So now you've got some level of lactose intolerance developing just transiently from bile acid diarrhea. Um, that, yeah, it comes Ex back to... Excrete yeah, go for all it. your serotonin and now you're depressed. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the gut <laughs> coming from the liver, it, it, it's fascinating that... When we've broken down these individual organs, how, on one sense, you you treat the organ for its job and what it does, but in the the bigger scheme of it, what's fascinating is that this is where you know I, I think how functional medicine thinks versus conventional medicine. It connects the organs and that mm. the liver isn't just the liver. The liver affects. Uh, digestive health digestive health in the gut affects the liver if the liver isn't operating efficiently then you're going to see issues with mm -hmm. malabsorption of food regardless of the stomach so it's it's fascinating how when we just talked about the kidneys kidneys are affected by the adrenal gland and the lung health and the blood pressure then carrying over onto cardiovascular health and cerebrovascular health like it's at the end of the day, when, when we're doing all this education, it's to see the big picture and focus on, I got to protect my kidneys. I got to protect my protect liver. All of it. You know, you got to, it's a it. whole system that interacts, which is beautiful.